Number five, calculate the work done by an 85 kilogram man who pushes a crate four meters up along a ramp and makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. He exerts a force of 500 newtons on the crate parallel to the ramp and moves at a constant speed. Be certain to include the work he does on the crate and on his body to get up the ramp. All right. So uh, here's our picture, right? There's two things going on. One, there is a crate um, in which he is applying a force to that is moving up this ramp, right? And the force that he applies to the crate is parallel to the slope of this hill. So that means, right, if I'm looking at this formula down here, right, work is equal to force times distance times the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the distance vector. If I'm looking at that formula here, I know, actually, let me just write that down quickly. All right, so work is equal to FD cosine theta. Uh, if I'm thinking about, you know, the force uh, applied to the crate, or let me frame it this way. If I want to find the work done on the crate, then I need then I need to know the force applied to the crate, the distance the crate travels, and then the angle between that force vector and that distance vector. Okay, so do we know that? Well, yeah, we do, right? We know the crate moved four meters up the uh, incline, right? And that the force, right, was 500 newtons and parallel to the ramp. So both the distance that this crate travels here and the force right here are parallel to one another. So therefore, the work would equal 500 newtons. This is for the crate. Uh, 500 newtons times the displacement or distance of four meters, right, multiplied by the cosine of zero. All right, because the angle between those two vectors is zero. So when we do this, it's simple, right? The work done is 2,000, right? And that's in joules. So this is the work I'll do. I'll write a sub C here for the crate, all right? Now, uh, that's just the work done on the crate, but not only is the man pushing the crate, right, up the hill here, uh, he's also going to bring himself up the hill too, right? He's gonna travel up the hill like this. So. What we have to realize as well is that as soon as he starts going or has a vertical component to his uh, to the distance he's traveling, let's say, that means he will be then exerting a force against gravity, right, to propel himself upward. So he's going to be doing some work in the y direction. So now let's just look at this picture. This angle in here is 20 degrees, right? The crate is going to move, as it said, up the hill. Uh, what was it? Four meters. Okay, so this is four, the hypotenuse is four meters. So guess what it, this forms? It forms a nice little what? It forms a nice little triangle, our component triangle, right? You thought you were done with all that. Not even close. So here what we're going to do is we're going to try to calculate now the distance he travels in the y direction. Okay, so this is just simple Sokotoa. Now let, let's just do that and then let's talk about what that means. So we're going to use sine here. Right, so sine of theta, and the theta here, I'm talking about that angle, okay, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So sine then of 20 degrees will equal the distance of the y direction. Let me just call it y, all right, uh, divided by four. So y will simply be sine of 20, sine of 20 times four. So 1.37, okay, so 1.37, and that's in terms of meters, right? So this is how far he moves in the, oops, this is how far he moves in the y direction. Now remember, gravity acts in the y direction, right? Only in the y direction, okay? So that means whatever distance he traveled in the y direction, he had to exert a force to overcome the force due to gravity, right? So gravity is going to be pulling him down the whole way here, but he keeps pushing himself on upward, okay? So how can we think about this? Well, let's write another work formula down. Okay, so now this is the work of, let's say, just the person without the crate now. Okay, so let's say this is the work of the man is equal to the force the man is applying to himself multiplied by the distance he is moving against the force he's applying. All right, multiplied by the cosine of those, uh, multiplied, excuse me, by the cosine of the angle. Uh, in which uh, that these two vectors create. So if I were to think about it, right, he's moving in the y direction and gravity again acts in the y direction. So the angle between those two vectors would be zero. Okay. 
So now the work of the man that he is applying to himself will equal a force. Well, what's the force due to gravity? It's the weight, right? And what's the weight of an object? It's simply mg, right? So it's the mass of the man times gravity multiplied then by the distance he travels in that y direction, multiplied by cosine of theta. So continuing here, right, his mass is 8.85 uh, kilograms, and gravity is 9.80, and he traveled in the y direction, uh, what was it, 1.37 meters, times then cosine of zero. So then the work that the man did on himself, okay, would be 85, 85 times 9.8 times 1.37, and cosine of zero is just one. So this simply works out to 114, we'll call it zero. So 1,140 joules. Great, so now, so we got the work done on the crate, the work done on the man himself, right, by himself, just to get him up the incline here, four meters. So now, if we have to find the total amount of work that he does, not only bringing himself up against gravity, but also to push this crate, what do you think we're gonna do? Just add them, right? So all we're gonna do is add these two things now. Okay, so we're gonna take them together. And we're just gonna simply add them. All right, so what do we get? So it's 3,140 joules. Right, that would be the final answer. And uh, yeah, looks good to me, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you, uh, hope you learned a lot. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe and uh, tell all your friends. I don't mind. Take care.